six. It belongs to the Milwaukee Bucks. And here's Commissioner David Stern with the announcement of what the Bucks are going to do. With the sixth pick in the 2007 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Yi Jianlian from China and the Guangzhou Tigers. There are several fans from China here to see Yi's selection. This is also being broadcast live in China. CCTV, the national television carrier of the NBA in China, and the national television for that matter for the entire country, a country of 1.3 billion people, carrying this event live tonight for the arrival of E in the NBA. Fran Fraschilla has traveled overseas many times. He is our Minister of International Basketball for ESPN. Look, 1.3 billion in China, so because two Chinese players come to the NBA doesn't mean they're alike. Give us the differences because we've known Yao for five years. What's Yi all about? Well, Yi is a power forward, Michael, could play away from the basket. Very athletic. Yao's the old school. Yi is new school. He's hip-hop. He's 50 cent. He loves to dunk on you. Can shoot the ball from outside. He's got a lot of international experience, especially against Americans. So while strength will be an adjustment in the NBA, his skill level may be the third best in this draft. He's very versatile. Can get to the rim in one dribble. Has had big games against U.S. teams before. He's been to Pete Newell's big man camp. Played against our best high school, college, and NBA players. Last year in the World Championships, he was very successful against LeBron and company. And as I said, the biggest adjustment is strength. Remember this, Mike, the key decision maker, Larry Harris for the Milwaukee Bucks. His father, Del Harris, coached Yi in 2004 on the Chinese Olympic team. That's right. Yi playing his basketball, his championship teams in the CBA, the Chinese Basketball Association for the Guangdong Tigers. Guangdong is on the south coast of China, population 82 million in that province. So that is the basketball with E. Fran, in terms of international players, will we hear more from international players as the night goes on? It's a, it's a quiet year, Mike, compared to uh, the last few years. There may be four, there may be seven first-round picks, but the, the, the future of international basketball in the next couple of years is outstanding. This year, it's not going to be what we've seen the last few years. Yeah, the last couple of years, six international players taken in the first round. Last year, seven the year before, nine in that big draft of 03. So Fran will be watching that when an international player gets taken. We'll bring in Fran. Right now to Andy Katz, who's been uh, monitoring the E situation with Milwaukee here for the last 48 hours. Andy, this isn't exactly the perfect fit. Well, it actually is for Milwaukee, not for E's representation, because they tried to prevent Milwaukee from watching him in Los Angeles, which they were able to accomplish. But I just spoke with the Bucks organization. They plan on keeping Yi. They think he's a huge piece of their puzzle to get into the playoffs. And the major thing here is that it went up the flagpole with the Bucks. They confirmed it with the NBA that they want to keep him in Milwaukee. And you mentioned the senator earlier in our show. Senator Herb Cole, United States senator, is the owner of the Bucks. Rick Buecher, you've also been watching this. Uh, will this start some trade conversation, perhaps? It certainly will, because while the Bucks might want to keep him, the truth is that outside of these people, this Milwaukee does not fit the parameters of where they wanted to go. And the interesting part here is that Larry Harris is going strictly on what his father has told him about this kid, did not see E play in China this season. Again, Dell Harris, multiple times an NBA coach, Houston and Los Angeles immediately coming to mind. His son Larry running the operations in Milwaukee, while Dell is the top assistant for Avery Johnson in Dallas. Let's hear from E, who's been in the States for a few months. He's standing by now with Stu Scott. Stu. Michael, E. Jian Lian will be the fifth Chinese-born player in the NBA. E, why do you think you are ready for the NBA right now? I think, um, no, I play for, play for national, I have played for a national team for a couple years, and I think I'm ready. I, I played, uh, I played the Olympics, I played, uh, I played the World Championship, I played all the World Games, and I think I can play in NBA. you spent a lot of time in the United States. I know you've been on the red carpet at several movie premieres. You've gone to parties in Los Angeles. What's your favorite thing about America? I think, like, a um, lot, like, the... Uh, because I've been in LA to rock out, I like LA the, the weather, the people here, and 
The foot very good. Mike, he also wears Sean John gear, so America's it. <laughs> he has been Americanized. You know, China has long been described as an emerging market from a financial standpoint, as my friends at CNBC now say it's an emerging superpower, no longer an emerging market, but there is financial considerations wherever he goes. And that's why Rick and Andy were talking about, Mark, the potential of this may not be the best fit in terms of the entire business aspect of it. So what do you think about what Larry Harris did? Well, I like the move. The reason why is because basically in a good old-fashioned game of poker, they called the bluff of Ian and his representation. They said, hey, we're going to take the best player available and we're going to keep them. If not keep them, but they have a prize. Now they have a, a piece where they can have conversation as far as making movements. But call a bluff, take the best guy available, and don't be moved off of I completely agree with you. Who cares what the representatives say? The reality of the situation is you've got a structure in place. This is the way it goes, and you've got to comply with the system unless you're able to circumvent around it, which he may or may not be able to do. But I do have a question, and I need you guys' help with some of that with this Rick Buecher said that Larry Harris he didn't see the guy at all his father so his father works for the Dallas Mavericks he doesn't work for the Milwaukee Bucks I don't like that part of it because <laughs> if it doesn't work then guess what I don't, I don't have any authority over his father I've got authority over him and if I'm Herb Cole I'm gonna look at that situation and we're talking about Larry Harris I like him I'm very fond of him as a GM but my goodness you need to see it yourself that's well, I think Larry's people have seen. Okay, well, I'm just saying, based just, on yeah. the report, that's all I'm the saying. The idea that Larry may not have seen him himself doesn't bother me because you do have to rely upon your scouts. And, and would I, you? I would trust Del Harris if he were my dad. Absolutely. Well, I, I trust, trust him, him, though too. he's not. Because okay, he had him and he coached him. That's, that's one of the big parts there. So, you know, the.